Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November Julian here for Off Grid Ham Radio. In the first episode of the Off Grid Ham Radio Expedition at the Arctic Circle, we showed you the location we were camped at, we showed you how we made our way to that location, and we left off with the beginning of a windlink session. In this episode, I'm going to show you the radio equipment I was using, the antennas I was using, and perhaps a couple of QSOs I had during the trip. Stick with me a while, and I'll tell you all about it. All right, guys, let's go. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. One of the most important tools we have in off-grid communications and ham radio is JS8 Call. Sadly, most of the people I hear talking about JS8 Call don't understand its potential for the portable ham radio operator. Using JS8 Call, a field radio operator can utilize a very narrow bandwidth data stream to initiate a reliable QSO with a station multiple hops away. In practice, this means slow but very efficient communications versus current hungry radios using very wide bandwidth and an unnecessary amount of power. Since we were operating completely off-grid during this expedition, it was important to put my JS8 call skills to the test. At the moment, I'm having a JS8 call QSO with my buddy Jan, Sierra Mike 6 Tango Whiskey Yankee. Jan is in southwest Sweden, just south of Gothenburg putting him someplace between NVIS and the first hop. This distance between us can also make it difficult to find a single antenna configuration for reaching out DX, local communications, or stations at Jan's range. I decided to address this problem by deploying two different antennas. The first was an off-center fed dipole for 80 meters from November 9 Sierra Alpha Bravo. The second was the light NFED half wave from Chameleon Antenna. Both were deployed using the carbon fiber telescopic masts from Gigaparts. And one of the problems we have in the field is choosing the correct antenna configuration. I would say 99% of the time there is no single one size fits all antenna for all scenarios. With that leftover 1%, we might be talking about a full wave 80 meter loop. Good luck deploying it in the field, though. As you'll soon see in my QSO with Jan, one antenna was more effective than the other. The more effective one was the light NFED half wave from Chameleon. That antenna was more effective to Jan because it was in a sloping configuration. If you look closely, you can see the wire in the sloping configuration just to the right of the quadcopter. We're going to read in the QSO what Jan says about this new antenna configuration. But remember, it doesn't mean the antenna is better or worse than the other. It means a particular antenna configuration is more effective or more reliable to a particular station or region than another. Let's go ahead and read what Jan says about the chameleon lifts in sloping configuration. Now Jan returns to say my signal with the off-center fed dipole went from minus 3 to a minus 10 with the NFED half wave. Now why do I say the antenna is more effective? Well, it's because he also says the signal is stable. While using the off-center fed dipole, I had a better signal to noise ratio, but there was also QSB. In contrast, while using the NFED half wave, Jan received me with a lower signal-to-noise ratio, but without any QSB. It was a solid copy all the time. I suppose the point I'm trying to make here is our antenna configurations are extremely important. Since JS8 call is a network mode, you never know who you're going to be contacting to get your messages from the network. On the other hand, you may very well be making contact with a known station. 
This is true with Jan and also with the Winlink sessions I have later on in this video. Anyway, as you can see in the map here, with my two different antenna configurations, I can get local comms out into DX, Australia, North America, and so on. Anyway, it was a good test with Jan, so I think we can go ahead and finalize the QSO with him and move on to the next topic. Now, while we wait for Jan's final to come in, let's talk a little bit about the GPS on the ICOM IC705. JS8 call and FT8 both require a clock sync or an accurate clock on your computer to be effective. Now, after I published the first video in this series, one of you asked in a comment why I wasn't using the wireless connection for the ICOM IC705. The problem here is the GPS is not accessible as a virtual COM port over a wireless connection with the 705. Over a wireless connection, I can get the audio interface and CAT control, but no GPS. I think this is a massive error from ICOM and one which should be corrected in a future revision or firmware update. Anyway, that's why I'm not using the wireless connection. So a huge thanks to Jan, Sierra Mike 6 Tango Whiskey Yankee for testing with me. If you see him on JS8 call, please say hello and send warm regards. Hey buddy, Gato. Now we got a lot of radio testing done during the trip, but we also had some good food. Now, before the humans get their food, Junior gets his. This time, he had some dried kibbles along with some smoked salmon. We try to keep the food prep simple when we're in the field just to make things easier. With that said, there is some benefit to deploying with this camper caravan. Two of those benefits are having a propane-powered refrigerator and a propane-burning stove. This means we can actually eat some real food from time to time when we're out in the field. Now, this part of the video was sponsored by Todd, Kilo India 5, Hotel November X-Ray. Todd was kind enough to send over this jambalaya care package and his recipe for it so that my buddy and I could have a good meal during our Arctic Circle expedition. Now, many of us don't understand that Food prep and a good meal is incredibly important when you're out in the field. We can certainly get along with MREs or some dehydrated food packs or things like that. But really, the best way to get in a better mood, to get warm and to feel good about the expedition is to have a good meal together. Now, we didn't follow Todd's recipe exactly. The store we stopped at before we headed north didn't have all the ingredients we needed to follow his recipe exacted. Nevertheless, this was absolutely magnificent. So a huge thanks to Todd for hooking us up with the magnificent jambalaya supply. I can say the jambalaya is an excellent motivation boost in the Arctic and will certainly be making your recipe again in the future. Thank you, Todd. Semper Fi, brother. And now it's Jumbalaya time. Now like JS8 call, Winlink is a network mode. The network can be peer-to-peer, -peer. it can be a hybrid network completely over RF where your messages are sent from station to station until it meets a recipient. Or your messages can be sent over RF to, for example, a Gmail account or vice versa from a Gmail or some other email client over RF back to your station, wherever it happens to be. Now, when you're looking for a gateway station or a hybrid station to get your messages to, 
we can't always rely on that station being available or accessible. That's when we start looking for other gateways or hybrid servers to connect to. This simple messaging strategy completely destroys the concept of no random contacts. Because if the station you're trying to reach isn't there, isn't available, or inaccessible for some reason, you'll need to connect to another station. You won't know that until you try to reach the station you initially tried to contact. The only way the no random contact philosophy works is if you have a predefined schedule, you know where you're going to be, you know where the station you're looking for is going to be, you set up your antennas to reach that station specifically. Unfortunately, this no random contact strategy doesn't take into account the variables of not being able to reach the station you intended to reach. So although the concept of no random contact sounds great for clicks in a YouTube video, it doesn't allow us to adapt to changing band conditions, stations which should be there but aren't there, or failure and our schedule with the station we're trying to reach. In the case of a WinLink session or even a JS8 call session, messages have multiple paths to make their ways to me. If I omit the possibility of connecting to a random station or an unplanned station, so I also limit the possibility of receiving messages through alternate paths. This is why network modes like WinLink and JS8 call VAR AC will remain a part of my survival comm strategy now and in the future. With that said, keep your data communication strategy flexible and adaptable. You may bet your life on it someday. So, coming up in the next episode, I'm going to show you some FT8 sessions we did from the Arctic Circle. For my FT8 sessions, I had a little help from Oliver, Delta Lima 4 Kilo Alpha, and his latest PA500 amplifier. Despite those horrific conditions on HF, I had an absolutely brilliant time working FT8 from the Arctic. Stay tuned for that next episode. If you have any questions or need me to clarify anything, please drop me a comment and I'll try to answer it in the next video. And with that, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, please let me know by leaving me a comment or a thumbs up or even a very special super thanks to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or somewhere where other operators might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. You are all absolutely awesome. Thanks for watching. Ciao.